Hi everyone and welcome to the Mike's DIY Tips channel on the YouTube. I'm Mike and in this video we'll be dealing with a real project in which I build a shoe storage unit for a holiday apartment that sleeps four to five people so that means there's quite a few shoes to be organised and kept tidy. Here's a picture of the finished unit in action. As you've just seen, the design incorporated pull-out baskets to store the shoes and so I had to find a source of supply for baskets of suitable size and strength and this is what I chose. I should also mention that I had to design and build the unit in such a way that it could be dismantled again and transported a long distance as a flat pack. So that explains the type of construction for the unit that I chose. Okay, so our project is to make an open fronted cabinet with four pigeonholes to insert pull out baskets. The basket size was chosen as suitable for storing shoes, so the basket size controls the overall size of the cabinet. It's all made of 18mm MDF board. I got all the individual panel pieces cut to size at the Timber Merchant and although they charged a little extra for that it's well worthwhile because their saw cuts beautifully square and it gives you a flying start for your project. I'm going to put some extra embellishment around the bottom edge to finish it off but in the meantime, note that the face of the side panel is flush with the end of the bottom panel. The top panel is bigger than the bottom panel because it will overhang at the front and at the two sides. Fixing wise, screws through the bottom and locating dowels for all of these panels. The top panel will only have concealed locating dowels because I don't want to screw through the top. Although I'm going to do a painted finish I find that filled screw holes tend to show up a few months after you've painted. So to support the top panel I'm going to insert aluminium angles underneath and for the middle shelves as well. Next we need to start marking out the individual panels for the fixing holes and dowel holes. So this is the bottom panel clearly marked. This is the centre line of the centre panel exactly halfway between the edges of the board. We've already had the board exactly cut to size. This line over here is 9mm in from the edge because the panel thickness that's going to sit on there is 18mm and the same there. That's the centre lines marked for the bottom panel. And we're going to measure all of the holes from the back edge. The reason is that the top and bottom panel aren't the same size. To do that I've made a simple measuring stick. Well worth one if you've got to mark out repeatedly the same hole positions. I've decided that's going to be my back edge corresponding with this back edge and I've drilled 2mm holes with a slight countersunk because then it allows the pencil to go through. So put the marking stick flush with the back there and jiggle the pencil in the hole. When you've done the same here, we can join them up. So then we can do the same down there and join them up. So that's the panel marked out. What I've done now is I've marked out the top panel to correspond with the bottom panel. So I've jumped ahead again and I've already drilled the dowel holes in the bottom panel. 
To secure the panel to my bench to stop it moving about I've used an old piece of wood with a screw at each end and now I'm going to quickly show you how I drill those holes with my 50 year old dowel drilling jig. It has hardened steel bushes to guide the drill so those are the same size as the dowels. It has index marks there to centre up the hole and down there but in this case I want to drill along this edge 9mm in. I've ascertained that if I put a little bit of packing on there that makes the hole exactly 9mm in. So then I've just got to worry about how to line up with that. So I use that index mark there, line it up and then we're ready to drill as soon as we've clamped. So here's the drill with the red tape on governing the depth we want to drill the hole. That depth is made up of the depth we want to go in the board plus the thickness of the metal in the jig. So we apply the drill down as far as the red tape and stop drilling. And the same with the other holes on this board and on the underside of the top panel. So now we come to the drilling of dowel holes in the edge of the vertical panels. Already marked out with our measuring stick. A line across and a line down there. Here's our drilling jig modified to include this clamping device which you'll understand in a moment. If you remember we put this piece of packing on there to ensure that the centre of the hole was 9mm in from the edge. Now we need to line up the hole with this line here. The index mark on the jig is now in line with my pencil line so I need to hold that jig in place while I apply a packing piece and tighten up the clamp. Now it's only finger tight at the moment so I need to tighten it with a screwdriver otherwise it might just slip at the wrong moment. Then as before we've got red marking tape on the drill but this time it's further up because the dowel is going to go further into the board. As before stop drilling when we reach the red tape in line with this here. And then you need to do the same two edges on each of the three vertical panels. As you can see I've done a partial assembly with the bottom panel and three upright panels just held together with the dowels only at the moment. The next stage is to drill the screw hole positions. So I've already drilled the bottom panel with a pilot hole size drill because now what I want to do is to use the hole in the bottom panel to mark where I want the holes drilled in there. Remember these are pilot holes. So when I take it apart I can see where those holes are and continue further into the panel. We're moving on now to the aluminium angles that are going to support and hold down the top panel and I've cut the angles to length and I've been smoothing off the ends and I'd like to quickly show you how I did that. First of all safety goggles on and safety gloves. So here's my drilling setup to put the holes in the aluminium angles. I've got a drill press like this. The edge of that wood is positioned to enable the drill to automatically drill along that chosen line. As regards positioning the holes that way, I've already worked out that if I start the aluminium on that mark, drill a hole 
move the hole along there, drill another hole and so on. So here we are, another angle, slide it in there, position the end of the angle on that mark there. Then just use a file to take the rough metal edges from the underside of the hole. Now I've got the countersunk bit in the drill and I can countersink the holes. So I've moved on. I've been numbering all of the angles. So this angle goes in exactly this position and marking the hole. I've done a trial assembly again, this time with the top panel held in place with the locating dowels which all fitted in beautifully. Next I need to mark through the holes in the aluminium angle to tell me where to drill the pilot holes in the top panel for the fixing screws. Right, more progress. I've marked, drilled and screwed the top in place, same with the shelves. I've beveled the edge of all these front panels using a technique like this, using my plane and this rotary sander belt. Also I've put block feet on the base because those are going to support the trim that I want to put down the sides and across the front using mitered corners. Here we are with the finished article. Basket inserts, these were purchased on the internet as I mentioned before. The bottom trim I mitered using a miter saw and I've done a separate video on using one of those. Finally the paint finish. Three coats of four hour dry water based furniture paint. Silk finish. So there you are then, that's how I constructed the shoe storage unit. You can probably think of alternative ways of putting it together, especially if you don't have to take it apart again to transport as a flat pack. If you enjoy my videos you may like to subscribe to my channel in order to get automatic notification of when new videos are launched. If you'd like to do that just click on the circular icon appearing on the left of the screen now otherwise you can click one of the three rectangular icons appearing to watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.